upon all of you, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome. First of all, we would like myself and on behalf of Mr. Jalul Najai to express our sincere gratitude for Dr. Salima Maouj for inviting us and granting us the opportunity to share with you our humble experience. We would like also to thank Professor Kiskes, the president of our session. We would like to thank the English department at Bijaya University and all the organizing committee members for their great efforts and work. Uh, before we start, and when we have been invited to talk on civic education, we felt the urge that at, instead of starting uh, at a higher level, what, why not just tackle the issue from its roots and from its basics? Therefore, our work will be entitled Algerian Education, an argument for virtue or a narrow advice. But before we start indulging into the main details of the work, I'd like to give the floor to my colleague, Mr. Nijay Jalul, for giving an overview of the main points to be discussed so far. The floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So in today's talk, we are going to go through the following elements. Yeah, this one. So as I've said, in today's talk, we are going to go through the following elements in a snapshot there as follows. So we are going to start with an overview to the background of our study. We're going to start with an overview and background to the study highlighting the main objectives of the research project, focusing on three focal uh, main research queries with respect to the role of education in inculcating the ideals of uh, civism among Algerian individuals. So the used methodology to address the themes of the study focusing mainly on the analytical reflections of the main course selected for the study and finishing up with the recommendations and conclusions without forgetting uh, the references we've relied upon. Now, I hand the floor over to Dr. Kerza to carry on. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, undoubtedly, the issue of education in the Algerian context has been controversial for many decades. Educators strived vigorously just after independence to search for a content that would inculcate the ideals of civism and modernity without the distortion of Algerian traditions and values. However, what has been observed in our society, mainly among our young generations, does reflect a big deficiency in terms of attitudes and content. Ladies and gentlemen, the current paper has been inspired by an American proverb saying that the current paper intends to raise awareness among Algerian educators, teachers, practitioners, and policymakers of the necessity of reconsidering the educational agenda at a basic level. What's more is finding out solutions to overcome the major deficiencies observed, appeal for concrete and practical solu solutions and involvement of public opinion, presenting a true tendency of the national community and the global international community, an urgent call for considering individual attitudes and conducts for the welfare of 
educational development and life at large. And as educators and good citizens of this country, we felt the urge that part of our duties to sound the alarm and draw the attention of the focal authorities at a higher status to bring about positive changes. In addition, the current paper attempts to inquire into the following lenses. So has Algerian education failed its prospects? And if yes, in which level it did fail as well? What, and, what can we, and what can be done to solve deficiencies, right? Concerning the methodology we've opted for and to explore the so far sought query, we've opted for the following search methodology design. At first, our concern was primary school level between 2016 and 2018. Besides, a descriptive approach has been uh, adopted to explore primary school course books and relying on some experts, uh, I mean experts interviews, mainly education inspectors, and content analysis has been used to address the data collected for this research project. Now I pass the floor again to Dr. Girza. Thank you very much. Okay, so as we have said, we have analyzed course books at primary level, and what has, what has been found so far is summarized under the following headings and themes and patterns. So, looking at the main course books that we have relied on, we have fundamental principles and the pillars of the Algerian identity and education. Looking at first course book, the book of Arabic, what we have found is that the f course uh, related to education and religion mainly is meant to inculcate religious monotheism, sincerity and faith. But here the question is, can a child of the age of six still grasp, has the ability and the skills to grasp this abstract concept. And we try to teach them sincerity and faith at an early age. Also, we try to teach them national identity, love of the country and homeland. We try to teach them the love and respect of the family and family ties which represent the cornerstone of the society. Despite of all this, our young generation fail to achieve many things. More importantly, they are disentrenched. They lost hope and faith in their own country, in their homeland, and they prefer to die outboards, overseas, rather than try to think and work hard in their own country. So it is really open to question and asking. The course books we have in the educational agenda tend to teach good manners, truth and honesty, authorization and endorsement, they try to teach them cooperation on righteousness and piety. They teach them spruceness and purity. But, ladies and gentlemen, is it enough for our children to behave as such? This is what do we have in reality, unfortunately to say. Well, we teach them to keep harm far away from the pathway of the others. But unfortunately, many individuals behave as such. Well, we have attempted to dig in depth and scrutinize more course books, and we went to preparatory level. 
and we found works and stories and readings like this, Al Asa wal Himar, a story that teach the morals of ungratefulness, of rebellion, a story of the donkey, a story that teaches how to feel in such a sarcastic way and how not to be responsible and pay attention to the older's opinion. So, we wanted to make a comparison of the older world side. Japan, for instance. We went to grade level two at kindergarten and they teach their children family ties, compassion, how to respect family relationships. They teach them through stories how to respect their history, their country, and their memories of the country. And as a result, you can see, pictures do speak for themselves. Well, this is Japan. Everything is clean and tidy. This is part of our earth, our world. We attempted to look to another part of the world, Europe, in the United Kingdom. The kind of books they try to teach their children, for example, this book taken from Robert Munch, Love You Forever. It's a story of the development of the individual from birth to adulthood. And more importantly, they teach the ideals and virtues of love, compassion, and tolerance. And this is the result we have out of these teachings. Everything is clear, everything is clean, beautiful. This is not meant to just demean the situation we have and we live in. But this is an attempt to look at the main causes of this. Maybe Mr. Jalul will have to say something about this. So what could be induced from the former course books is that the analysis of the former course books is that we uh, cannot only blame the educational system uh, as uh, an agenda because the educational process is sequential. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, many parts are responsible uh, in shaping the education of the Algerian individual uh, behavior, namely the media, the school, the street, and the family. So, we haven't stopped here. We have gone further and we relied on some inspectors' views and perceptions. And what did we obtain out of this? So, the issue from an angle of a practitioner was said to be the inspector answered like this, mediocrity. The institutions, whether it be school, university, are the opposite of what they claim. There is a total absence of the family. The student is delivered to himself between the street and the internet. A total absence of parents, crowded classrooms, a total absence of ethical conduct, the teacher and parents likewise are not anymore reflecting the values and morals they claim for. In one word, يَقُولُونَ مَا لَا يَفْعَلُونَ You find a father at, in his home just receiving a call and the child would say, you got a call from your friend. Just tell him, I'm not here. So, what do we expect if we have a generation brought up on the teachings of مقامات الهمذاني قصص جوحا وأشعب These stories were all principles of cataclysm, dishonesty and cheating are rooted in our children. 
More than that, the educational staff has lost passion in one's profession. They turned from lovers of the job into bread seekers, mustarzikin. Can you imagine a teacher just preferring to work in a pizzeria shop instead of just giving back the grades of the students on time? What do you expect when you have the teacher and the educator has become more a subject of public anecdotes and jokes from where the, the teacher was like a prophet. The story of the teacher, sorry, the story of the teacher and Juha has become one in the balance. Well, just as a matter of recommendations, we can suggest the following. Identify and spot the problems from their roots. A radical change and reconsideration of educational curricula where bridging the gap between theory and practice is precarious. Mindful counseling as well as spiritual and moral follow-up of children. Encourage rewards, incentives and prizes. Create counseling and inspection committees at all levels endorse intellectual and sports activities, parental counseling is mandatory, and more importantly, more on that, relate theory with practice. Because without practicing, all these remain words on paper. Ladies and gentlemen, sorry to shock you more. Algerian education has failed its prospects in that instead of inculcating morals and virtues, and preserving Algerian ideals and traditions, it has become a womb of its own deficiency. Before I close up, I would just finish with a true story. A story of one of my siblings. She was a teacher, an educator, a mentor. So once a marginalized, very poor student was subject to sarcasm and schoolfulness, of all, the teacher, the educator, the patron, saw her miserable conditions. She noticed her ears pursed with a thread, with signs of wounds and blood. She was the kind who sits always at the back, silent and reserved. After class, she took her to the nearest medical center and she treated her and she took her to a goldsmith and bought her golden earrings. After this event, the girl's attitudes changed and transformed 180 degrees. She started to participate, to talk, and to contribute in the classroom. And afterwards, she graduated as the best student of the school. You can see how the behavior of just one teacher has changed the fate of this student. So all the stories we tend to teach our children. Whether the storyteller intends them or not, they teach the world we create. They teach the morality we live by. They teach it much more effic effectively than more prospects and instructions. So, one answer to all this, go back to ethics. Go back to our roots, which are summarized in this. أحسن إلى الناس تستعبد قلوبهم فطالما استعبد الإنسان إحسان وإن أساء مسيء فليكن لك في عروض زلته صفح وغفران وكن على الظهر معوانا لدى أمل يرجو نداك فإن الحر معوان من جاد بالمال مال الناس قاطبة إليه والمال للإنسان فتان من كان للخير مناعا من فليس له عند الحقيقة إخوان وأخدان يا خادم الجسم كم تشقى بخدمته أتطلب الربح فيما فيه خسران أقبل على النفس واستكمل فضائلها فأنت بالروح لا بالجسم إنسان Ladies and gentlemen, these are the handouts and the references we relied upon. So without overdue, I would say thank you very much for your attention.
Okay, thank you very much, ladies.